Finalizing our Ari Ghost Box. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, uh, let's build it! Hello everybody and welcome back to our final build on the Ari Ghost Box. I know a lot of you have been waiting a long time for this video. And here it is, finally, we're able to wrap up the series. So let's go back down to our bench and see how do we finalize this great model kit. Welcome back down to our workbench, everybody. And there's that purple paper of doom again. <laughs> anyway, so we only have like three pieces left to paint. So that would be the box itself. Of course, this nice little box here with the... Uh, imitation hinges there and of course our big padlock and you can see the nice wood grain in here then we have the platform where the action's going to happen because there's the holes for our contacts for our bat, um, pickups to go into and finally we have the lift up door that hides the mechanism here from view so let's go down to our paper of doom and see how I'm going to get these parts ready for painting. All right so here we have our box on the purple paper of doom. <laughs> As you can see there's a lot of gloss here and if we paint this now with primer or whatever we are not going to have it stick to this because of the smooth surface. So what we're going to need is a sanding block, and I've stuck 400 paper on this. This used to be an old thong-type uh, running shoe back in the 70s, <laughs> before it got cut up. It's a nice, dense rubber. Anyway, so with our 400, we're just going to take a bit of the sheen off of here. And there now you can see we got a, a dull spot here. Feels a little rough. I'm going to progressively sand this until, uh, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to use some different grade sandpaper and just sand this along until we get up to about mm, 800 grit. And that should provide a fine, fine tooth for our paint to stick to and you'll notice a bit of low spots in here where that's still shiny we can also cross sand so you're taking your sandpaper at a 45 degree angle in this direction and then we're going to reverse it to do a 45 in this direction which will put a cross hatched pattern into our surface here and we'll eventually smooth this right out so it's flat like in this section. So I'm going to do this off camera and then come back with the finished result. So I'm going to use 400, 600, and then 800. You can also take this up to your sink, get your sandpaper wet because this is 3M wet dry sandpaper and uh, use it along here. It'll make a finer cut and it will act as sort of a slurry between the plastic and the sandpaper for smooth sanding operations. We're going to do that on this piece. We're also going to dull down our door and our landing area here. As you can see, that's pretty shiny. I have to personally be careful because mine was cracked here, so I had to re-glue this blade back on. So i got to be careful not to put too much pressure on there. I'll just snap it back off again. All right, I will see you in a few minutes. Oh wait, before I go, one thing I should note. I'm not going to sand on the wood grain with the sandpaper because that'll flatten that out. And I think there's enough like raw, rough texture in here so that the paint will adhere to that. All right, now let's go down and sand this. So here we are after sanding. And uh, I want you guys to notice something here. 
I still have a bit of the sink marks in, despite my cross sanding. Sometimes this will happen as uh, the plastic may be a bit lower in spots than you expected. See, I got mostly around the posts and pillars here. So there are two choices. The first is to take putty and fill these with the putty and then re-sand them once the putty dries. If you want the absolute perfection on your ghost box. I've got a bunch of these sink marks. <clears throat> but if you're not really after perfection and more functionality, then uh, you can decide just to paint this as it is, which would be okay. I mean, these will look like dents and whatnot, the sink marks. The most apparent ones, of course, are on the trap door. You can see there's like four of them right there. So again, it's up to you whether or not you want to fill these. But if you do fill them, this will look nice and flat and uh, make it look quite a bit better. Now one thing I'm going to do here is I'm not going to paint the back piece and I'm not going to paint inside here. I'm going to try to take my masking tape along this edge and then cover inside because when you have the ghost bank there's a lot of moving bits and sort of things like that so again I'm going to cover up here along these rails because oops, these rails are going to slide in here so the last thing I want is a coat of paint being all carved up and whatnot so I'm just going to leave this covered inside and along those rails when I paint it. Now I'm not going to get into a big painting lesson here um, for priming because I'm going to be making a video coming up in the future that's going to talk all about painting and everything you need to know about how to paint and prime these. So what I am going to do is show you how to paint the wood grain and the steel bands and all that sort of stuff. So that's where these videos are going to go. And here's our components after we sanded them down. Now, as you can tell here, there are still some visible sink marks going on. This is because the plastic sink marks were quite a bit lower than what I could cross sand out. So it's pretty bad there and there. Uh, what I would need to do if I want perfection would be to take some plastic filler and wipe it down here into the sink marks and then recross sand once the prime uh, the filler is dry. But you know you sort of have to figure which way you want to go here. Do you want to spend a lot of time making all these things absolutely perfectly flat and straight? Or are you more after the functionality and the effect of your ghost box? Which is, you know, to have the, uh, put the coin in and have the mechanism come and take it out. So it's up to you how much of this you want to perfect out. For me, I think I, I might just stop here, although probably I'll regret it. I'm not too sure. But really, the sink marks are the absolute worst right on this trap door because that's one of the things people are going to be looking at when this thing operates. So as you can see, there's four of them, and they are really deep in those spots. So again, you would just fill that with putty, and then once putty is dry, cross sand, and that should remove it. Now one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mask off these parts of the rail and the reason for that is when you take the lid and turn it over you can see where the rails are gonna gonna rub up against the plastic here let's just put this in so they're going up along these rails here so what happens is when you've got your ghost box you know, operating in operational mode, you're going to have this drawer pulled out. When you want to put it in storage mode, you're going to push the drawer in like that. Okay, so that the drawer is flush. 
Now, as you can see, the rails go back quite a long way. Pretty much they stop on there, on that ridge, you know, right there. So there's sort of two ways to do this. One is to take your masking tape and just lay it right in there. Or the other way is to take your masking tape and wrap it, whoops, <laughs> wrap it up along the roof and down here and cover all inside with masking tape or even like a, you, you could put a piece of plastic across here, plastic bag or something and have a plastic bag doorway and then have this all masked out in here so that when you spray with your, your uh, spray paint, black primer, it's what I'm going to use anyway you won't blow it in and have like black primer overspray all in the doorway here. So yeah, and then the other thing is this is going to be stuck to the to a cardboard box and I'm going to paint it over top here. So uh, this will all be masked off more or less just by being stuck to the cardboard. So my insides and the underneath here they're going to stay the uh, brown plastic you could paint it, of course, if you want that kind of perfectionism, but for me, I think this will just be a form follows function type of operational toy. So I'm not going to go too far with that. Now, what I'm going to do is off camera, I will prime this and uh, show you guys how it looks in black primer. I'm not going to do a lesson on how to spray paint with primers because I'm going to reserve that for an upcoming future video about painting your plastic model kits so that I can continually refer to that in future builds instead of having to show everybody a paint lesson on every single model I build, which I think will speed up a bit of these videos. And for the more professional people, they're not watching the same lesson over and over and over and over again. I mean, here at Monster Hobbies, are supposed to be monstrous and all, but torture is not part of what I want to do. <laughs> so anyway. All right, so I will return with a painted, primered painted project. And then I'll show you guys how to paint your wood grain paneling and these black metal bars that are going to be on here. So stay tuned. All right, so I thought it over a bit, and I decided to actually use some filler. So I used some uh, Games Workshop green stuff spot putty more or less and uh, you can see the results yeah I filled in those big deep uh, sink marks I figured that I I couldn't stand it to see it with sink marks all over the place so it was time to actually fill it all so I'm using this pop can just to hold it in place so when I spray paint there's something to hold on to and turn as well as when you're done you can just stand it up sort of like that and allow the paint to dry. So here we are back after painting and as you can see we've got a nice primer coat on our ghost box and there's a lot of wood grain in here and uh, so what I'll do I'm going to take it off this pop can, which acted as our stand, and I just let's set that there. And I also have these components here, the door and the floor, sitting on this separate thing. So first off, I'm going to use a paint called Rhinox Hide from Citadel, which is the Games Workshop. You can find this in your Games Workshop store. The second thing we want to do is use a shade called Agrath Earthshade and that will go into the cracks and crevices and then our Doom Bowl, yeah, Doom Bowl Brown is our first layer which will bring up the color from the washes or the shades actually and then finally Tuscor Fur which will give us a nice kind of wood grain top. So I have our little mixing plate here I'm just going to put our Tuscor brown I guess right there so what I'm doing is I'm using the top and I'm just gonna wipe a bit into here now this is our base brown color 
So we will start in our wood panel here. This is almost the same color as the bands. Now I think I'm going to paint these bands here a different color. But of course the black primer is so that our paint can adhere to the plastic. That sort of thing. So as you can see we're getting our brown in here, panel by panel. Carefully go around this lock. And we'll paint it all in here. Go kind of quick. Don't need to waste a lot of time. And, uh, yeah, just go around in here. Like, this Rhinox Brown is pretty dark. You can see its effect on the uh, primer there. How it's all going in dark. All right, so I jumped ahead a little bit and I painted all the panels on this box with the Rhinox hide. Just uh, did it off camera to sort of speed up things. So there's what it looks like on the top. So next I'm gonna apply our Agrath Earth Shade. This is our shade paint. I'm gonna use this kind of brush and uh, get going on it. So we'll set that there. Now this is a wash, so it's gonna run into all the cracks on our wood here. And I'll just go across there. Try not to be too sloppy, but this is pretty easy for paint to apply. You just basically go everywhere. Let it run into the cracks. Now the shades take the longest to dry of all the Citadel paints. It's because they're more watery and they will, uh, you know, they're more watery and they will take up more liquid to get them to work. So I will paint these again off camera and uh, come back when it's all dry. All right, so here's our chest here with the wash applied. And I've let this dry, and uh, I don't know if you can really see that against the black, but the wash has gone into all the wood grain and everything. I guess it's not quite as brown looking as before, so maybe you guys can tell. Okay, now that that's dry, I'm going to use the Doom Bowl Brown, and I'm going to dry brush that right onto our wood grain. Ooh, so let's just open this up right here and uh, we'll get our brush here. So what we want to do is this is layer number one and it's going to bring us up a level from our, our shade there. And if we use this lightly enough, we can start to pick up that wood grain the plastic molded wood grain and make this thing actually look like real wood. So layer one brings us back up from the dark bits and our second layer is going to highlight a lot of stuff. So you can see I'm just going over this quite dry. And the nice thing with the layers is this is thin enough that uh, we can almost paint the second layer right over top of this, like right away. So anyway, there you go. I don't know how well the camera's picking this up right now. Maybe it's pretty good. Usually when I say I don't know how well the camera's picking it up, it's picking up better than I can see it in the light. <laughs> so... I'll just do this uh, second panel here. 
I want to make sure we get most of the paint out of our brush. And we'll just go over this lightly. So there we go. It's actually quite cool to watch this unfold. It's like it's kind of smoky and dark underneath and now we're applying something lighter just to bring it out. I'm not too worried about hitting these bands here because they're going to become like an iron color. I was watching, uh, we have a Pirates of the Caribbean game, you know, from the Disney movie. It's a DVD one and there's a spot where you got to, you go into Port Royal and there's all these locked chests and you have to guess one out of four which one to shoot the lock off of. So they are iron on these things and they're kind of rusted too. So I think I might do that with this. So I'm just going to carry on with uh, dry brushing this stuff and then I'll come back in a second. We'll do layer number two. Okay so there is our chest after we applied the Doom Bowl Brown and now our final color here is Tuscor for Fur. Tuscor fur. Tuscor fur. Yeah, there's nothing about gophers with this. Okay, so let's open this up. It's one of the ones where the, the lids keep wanting to fall out of place. So again, we just do a quick dry brush technique here. Try to get all the paint out of there as best we can. Not all of it, of course. Okay, so here's our final bit. I'm just going to back this away from the edges a little, but already you can see how it's brightened it up. Just hitting the highlights of that wood grain. There we go. Give it kind of a sort of a rosewood look, I guess. Still dark enough to make it a bit creepy looking. <laughs> Mysterious looking, I guess. Let's see here. Oops, that was too much. Good thing about most woods is that their the paint color or the paint color. The coloring is sort of um, not uniform, you know what I mean? You can have light spots in wood where, and then it gets darker and so on. Just need to get in there a little bit. Yeah, that's a little too bright. So we can correct this by using, again, our uh, drop down a bit, using the Agrath Earth Shade and whatnot. Okay, and there's... There's a finale. Again, hitting it too hard. Oh, come on. Okay, this should soften it up, I hope. Okay, there's the three. Three panels for the top. I'll have to go in and do a little touch up here where I hit a bit too hard with the paint. Got the first one pretty much perfect though. Okay, I will do the rest of the panels and then come back. Alright, so I'm going to use another color. This one is called Terminatus Stone and this is a dry paint. So we will need some paper towel here. 
And the idea of this is it's kind of like a muddy, rubbery, funny stuff. So we just put it on our brush here. Then I'm going to wipe off as much as I can. Now this is like a highlight. So I'm only going to put it on the top panels here. I know i got to come back in and touch this up. But just so you can see, like it's depositing little light flakes of white on here. Now the reason why I'm only putting this dry brush stuff on the top is that's where the sun would actually hit this. Or the light. So this kind of lightens up these panels more. So I don't know if you can see that too well, but again, I've been proven wrong with this camera and the lighting. <laughs> All right. streaks going on here. Okay. All right. So that gives us a little bit of a lighter light refraction type of thing going on so there we go so now we have our chest ready for the next three colors which is going to be the iron on these bands so for base color we have lead belcher for a shade we have Nuln oil layer one will be iron breaker and the final layer will be rune fang steel so I'm just going to apply it the same way I did with the wood and I'll do all th four colors off camera and then let you guys see the final results. All right, so here's the ghost box coming along. You can see now I've added the silver to it and there's only really one thing left to paint here and that is the latch on the side. But, you know, look at look at how this worked out so nicely. There's the the door that's going to swing open with the skull and I got that part in I remember I said underneath I masked off the area where this was going to run so that's so that this can close up up to about there somewhere for when this is traveling which kind of looks like the back end once it all gets uh, sort of done together. And then we can always pull this out here when everything's screwed together. And that's what our box is going to look like. Okay, so for the brass on the latch, I'm going to use Warp Lock Bronze, followed by Agrath Earthshade. Then our layer of Brass Scorpion, followed by the final layer of a Rune Lord Brass. So I'm just going to paint the latch off camera and then show you what it looks like. Okay, so we got the ghost box into the almost final. There's the, uh, the brass lock there. It's looking pretty good. So now just move that aside and we got our mechanism back here again remember that <laughs> 
Anyway, there's two little notches underneath here. You can see them there and there. These wires are supposed to go through. And then here's the rest of our little bits. I've got a bunch of screws and we have these little metal pickup tabs. Now the tabs are supposed to go through here. Like so. And then the other one will drop in. Let's see. Much like like that. And our two wires here are going to pass through and get wound into that hole there. And then I'm not sure if you're supposed to bend these out. I'll have to look at the instructions again quickly. But then that'll get wound into there. And somehow this goes up underneath. Trying to make sure not the wires don't get caught under that mechanism there. And then this will drop on the top. And I'll screw it together up underneath with the screws. So I'll just do all that off camera and then we'll see how it works. Okay, here we go. And that's how it works. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of Monster Hobbies Let's Build It. And it would be really cool to see your RE Ghost Box over on our Facebook page. How did you build it and how did it work for you? Anyway, next time we will be doing something else brand new on Monster Hobbies Let's Build It. I'm not sure what it is, but you will find out. <laughs> anyway, if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share our channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification button so that every time we do another Let's Build It, you are the first one to know about it. And until next time, Happy model building!